So following the U.S. embassies in Bangkok's issuance of a terror threat in mid-January and then a, the failed bomb attempt uh, on Valentine's Day of this year, there has been increased pressure both from Thais and from the international community on the Thai government to increase visa restrictions. Thailand does have kind of a reputation of being kind of a, an easy entrance country. and. Many people are concerned how this will affect Thailand's tourism industry and how this will affect the financial financial industry. Joe, how do you think the general tourism pop tourist population is going to be affected by all of this? Well, I think negatively. I think that we're, what we're looking at is a situation where the recent bombings and the or not the accidental bombings and the terrorist scare in Bangkok will create a situation where Thailand starts going down the road that the USA has went down, and that's increasing uh, regulation as far as granting visas, as well as increasing security measures. In the USA, we've seen the development of the Department of Homeland Security and the TSA. The TSA regularly implements uh, body scanning ma uh, machinery, as well as pat-downs at our airports, and this is planning to expand into the USA. So I think that it's probably going to have a similar, uh, similar appearance here. In other words, that we're going to see more regulations as far as both the issuing of, issuance of visas as well as additional security regulations with the possibility of TSA-style searches at the airports or at public places in Thailand. So we're, what we're seeing is an exporting of the security technology and policies from the USA to Thailand as well as to other nations around the world. So I think it's a global trend. Now, the tourism, uh, the tourism industry in Thailand is big, very big. It's not as big as agriculture or manufacturing, but it's a sizable income for a number of the people that, that live and work in Thailand. So if visa restrictions are uh, ramped up and people are deterred from coming to Thailand, it will definitely have a negative effect on the economy. We're not certain what these regulations will look at, look like. But assuming that they're going to target people from the Middle East and Africa, people from Muslim nations, then that's a fairly uh, large chunk of the U.S. tourist dollar. Th Thailand does have a reputation as being fairly welcome to the global community and people from, other, uh, from a variety of nations. Now, when the U.S. became more strict several years ago, it hurt their industry. It hurt their, their tourist industry because people got fed up with the visa requirements. It also hurt the educational industry because U.S. previously made a lot of money from people on F-1 visas and other educational visa programs to come and study in the U.S. The U.S. lost a lot of that business. So Thailand, if they enact too much regulation and make it too hard for people to come to Thailand, it's going to hurt Thailand in its economic pocketbook. I think uh, we should clarify that as a result of the attempted bombing and the terrorism scares in Bangkok, the media has pushed an image of Thailand as this wild west frontier where uh, international criminals can come and go and, and, and cavort and have a good and wild time in Thailand. That's not really accurate. As we saw last year uh, with the Victor, uh, Victor Boot, investigation for um, for guns running, for gun sales, arms sales. Victor Boot was accused and ultimately convicted of being an international arms dealer. He was uh, investigated and set up by a joint or operation of the United States Drug Enforcement Agency and the Thai police. And um, ultimately, in spite of a very uh, brave fight against extradition, he was extradited to the U.S. Now, uh, it might surprise some people that extraditions are very, very common in Thailand. There's a number of uh, foreign people that maybe they're under the same mistaken impression that Thailand is, uh, is a playground for people on a lamb and people running from the authorities. But there's an extensive law enforcement network in Thailand. In fact, the FBI has its International Law Enforcement Academy just a few kilometers outside of ba Bangkok in Nantaburi. So... Um, uh, there's extensive law enforcement cooperation with a number of nations between Thailand and their uh, international counterparts. And in general, those international criminals or people that are 
are, are considering fleeing from a current court case or probation or parole and, and considering coming to Thailand, it's probably not the best idea. And that's disappointing news for some of us, I'm sure. Um, what I was struck by with this kind of, with this discussion was that, in my opinion, and in, in with others' ex experience in mind, Thailand is already kind of a difficult country to enter. Not as difficult as the U.S. mind, but there are already significant visa restrictions in place. For like, and it's true, however, that there are some countries that can enter. Tha excuse me, residents of some countries who can enter Thailand by flight. With a for a th with a thirty day visa, easy. Um, however, there are a significant amount of countries where citizens cannot enter Thailand unless they've gone through a very long process. People from these countries need to present their financial information. People from these countries need to prove that they are, they have a a return flight back from Thailand because the Thai government wants to make sure they are going to stay here. Um, people from such countries also need to fill out three different application forms. So, I can see this this process expanding and starting to include citizens of other countries that are that currently enjoy relatively lax visa regulations. Um, one thing I don't know much about is how this is going to affect the financial community that operates in Thailand. And Joe, do you have any insight on that? Yes, but it's not just the financial community, it's the business community as a whole. There's a number of uh, foreign people that come to Thailand and do business and uh, you know, in, in law practice, you meet a lot of these people that set up set up shop in Thailand, either in the form of a, of a limited company or in a partnership or a public company. Um, there's also people that trade in Thailand; they make purchases here. Um, so there's so like most most nations around the globe right now, Thailand is intertwined with other nations. And there's, uh, there's a great deal of cooperation between nations. So foreigners come here to do business quite significantly. And as anybody that's done business as a foreigner in Thailand will tell you, there's already too much bureaucracy. There's a lot of paperwork. There's a lot of headaches. Often things that we're used to doing uh, online or by computers in our home countries are still done manually here. And... Um, a lot of bureaucracy. As a foreigner doing business in Thailand, there's basically three areas that you need to watch out for. And that's number one, tax reporting, number two, money laundering, and number three, corrupt practices. Now tax reporting, the nationality that has the biggest burden is naturally the U.S. The U.S. Uh, U.S. persons are subject to international taxation above a certain level. And to add insult to injury, there's also been a number of uh, new regulations that have come come out, uh, notably the uh, the Hire Act H I R E and and the FACT Act um, that require financial reporting by foreign uh, by U.S. citizens that have assets or have financial holdings in banks or financial institutes outside of the U.S. that they have to report these to the the IRS. There's also requirements on the foreign banks that if they have U.S. citizen accounts that they have to report it to the U.S. IRS. Now this has already had somewhat of a freezing effect with some banks refusing to even deal with U.S. citizens. Again, I think that in many cases the U.S. is a leader in these type of regulations and other countries kind of fall into, fall into line, down the line, and start doing similar procedures. Now with money laundering, Thailand was just blacklisted last week by the uh, FATF, the Financial Action Task Force, for not doing enough about money laundering. And anybody that's done financial transactions in Thailand might be surprised because there's pretty strict standards already. Well, they might get even stricter because the Financial Action Tax Force said Thailand is not doing enough. They have to enact laws to identify terrorists and procedures to allow the freezing of accounts that are suspected of being involved in terrorist activities, among other, other things. Corrupt practices means paying a bribe. So if you're a foreigner and you're involved with any type of transaction where a government official is bribed or asked for a kickback, under U.S. law, you might be implicated under the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act. That happened last year with regard to the International Film Festival, where an American couple, quite prominent in the film community, was accused of paying a bribe to a Thai government official. The U.S. somehow got wind of this, and they prosecuted both the, the American couple and they also came back and surprisingly went after the Thai government official. So as a foreigner uh, doing business in Thailand, you have to tread carefully. 
Again, the image that's had in this Wild West environment where you can do what you want is false. There's a lot of requirements here. You're actually under the uh, under the scrutiny of both the Thai government as well as the uh, your own government and the international uh, network financial networks such as the Financial a Action Task Force. So um, if there's going to be more regulations, it might get even more difficult. That's all for today. This is Allison and Joe, and we will be back ne next week with more news on what's going on in Thailand and in Bangkok. Bye bye. <laughs>